Yeah, hey, Teresa, think about it. At some point in our lives, we're going to have to either rent a house or perhaps get a realtor to buy a house. And you might find yourself in a house that uh, has no furniture like this, just you and the realtor. We wanted to know what is Colorado doing to make sure that we're all safe? He is the 45-year-old, 300-pound realtor whose brutality disgusted so many. Bodies dug up on his ranch only after police found a kidnapped woman who was held in the shipping container. Todd Kolep's life seemed to be one that we could all envy. A very successful real estate broker who flew an airplane in his spare time. But his success masked a troubled life. He was a sex offender and former prison inmate. This is a new listing I put into market last week. The case surprised realtor Michael Madsen. The house flows very nicely, I think. Who relies on his clients to trust him. Oftentimes, you find yourself in the same car with them. You know, it might be dark after work. That's not uncommon. No, it's not. So how did this former prisoner get a real estate license? Arizona court records show when he was 15, he was convicted of kidnapping a 14-year-old by holding a gun to her head. At his home, he then duct taped her mouth and raped her. Well, in this letter to the South Carolina Real Estate Commission, he downplayed the whole thing, saying it was just a fight with his girlfriend and he never showed her the gun. South Carolina apparently believed him. It's one of several states where a criminal conviction does not stop you from getting a real estate license. We checked a handful of other states and found similar policies. Is it something you consider when you decide whether to give them a license? It is. The head of Colorado's real estate division says it's about giving people a second chance. In Colorado, the state considers whether the person is truthful, honest, and of good moral character. Can the public be assured that someone who gets a real estate license is safe? If it doesn't look like somebody's been rehabilitated, the commission's not going to issue a license. In Arizona, they won't issue a license to a sex offender or anyone convicted of a whole host of other crimes like child abuse or prostitution. Missouri bans sex offenders altogether. In Kansas, you have to wait 15 years before getting a license. In Kolop's case, he got a license five years after getting out of prison. Madsen points out, though, that this case is isolated. It's tragic. Tragic things happen in any industry. So we all know we should check into someone before you sign with a realtor, but here's something else. Don't just rely on what your friends tell you. Grab your laptop, go to Google, and put their name in. That way you can see what other people are saying, not just the people that are in your inner circle. Back to you. Yeah, Jace, but you, you want to guarantee, right? And if someone does a background check on a guy, uh, if he's got a clean slate, right, gets his license, and then he's arrested years later, then what? Yeah, that's a great question. So in some states, you have to voluntarily turn over that information. Other states require you to do so. In Colorado, though, we have something interesting. The Division of Real Estate actually gets a notice from CBI, the Colorado Bureau of Investigation, any time that a realtor is arrested or convicted of a crime. So if the realtor doesn't uh, use the honesty policy and report it himself or herself, the state will still find out about it, and then they can start their investigation.